I'm making this video in response to a couple of emails I've received over the last 24 hours and it relates to the Fluke 9010A uh, pods and boards and protection modules that I supply. Now I've been supplying these now for quite a long time and uh, don't sell that many, uh, it's quite a niche market um, but what I provide is the uh, bare boards and also uh, protection modules and uh, the reason I provide these is because as far as I'm aware they're not available anywhere else and I want to try and help keep the uh, Fluke 9010A machines along with other machines um, of the same type in operation and that's the only reason I do this uh, I do not run this as a company I do not make a profit doing this I sell everything at cost and um, it does actually cost me quite a lot of uh, time effort and money each year to do this so uh, I try and help when I can but I cannot offer individual support for people building these um, but I thought I'd go over the emails that uh, have been sent because um, firstly they're, they're kind of unacceptable uh, I'm doing this to try and help and uh, the sort of nonsense that um, these emails comprise of is just uh, it's just nonsense um, but I thought I'd go over first what the um, the issues are that the email's reporting. Now, it's very difficult to determine exactly what's going on because very few people ever um, get back to me with uh, success or otherwise that they've had building these. But every single board I ever make, uh, I have built an example of, at least one example of. Uh, this is the Z80 version of the pod set and uh, I've built about nine of these in total. I've done uh, three for myself and uh, a number for other people. I don't normally build things for other people, but they were for uh, particular uh, purposes. Now the Fluke 9010A, as I've said in previous videos, is a, it's a bit of a, uh, an odd design and it's a bit flaky in the way it operates. So getting these to work reliably can be a bit difficult. And uh, it can be a hit and miss depending on the ICs you get. and you do sometimes have to tinker with them. Now, I realise this is a bit of a culture shock for anyone used to uh, dealing with modern uh, devices, modern equipment you just plug together and it works. That's not really how this old equipment uh, behaves. Now, in particular, the thing that seems to cause most confusion after to separate these two boards. As I said, this is the, um, the pod for the Z80. Um, what seems to cause the most confusion are the protection modules. Now these are the old design and I uh, have switched over to using the new design. So all the uh, current builds that I've done use the, um, the newer design. It's exactly the same. All that's in these ICs are some dual diodes and then the rest are just uh, passive elements, just resistors. So I'll go over that particular circuit in a while because what's been reported doesn't really make a lot of sense and uh, I think a lot of it is just gossip and innuendo that you tend to get on forums with uh, people uh, saying things that they, they don't really uh, know anything about and then circulating it as fact and there's a lot of that in the world today so I'd like to uh, just address some of this in this video and uh, hopefully help anyone that's uh, trying to build one of these. Um, so firstly, the, all the boards are bare board tested by the board manufacturer. And because I've built examples of these, I know the board layout and design is fine. It's, it's very heavily based on the original anyway. These are really reproductions with a small, uh, a few modifications just to uh, cater for uh, dealing with the parts you can't get anymore. So I've built uh, quite a number of the Z80s. I've built quite a number of the 6502s as well and again these work fine. Um, never had any problems at all. I've had reports from other, a few people saying that they built them and not had any problems. Um, but as ever you get a few people that just want to cause trouble and complain. So what I thought I would do is go over the emails and then address the points that are being raised in these emails. So firstly, um, I'm not going to tell you the guy's name. Um, if uh, he wants to make himself known to anyone, then uh, he's free to do that. Um, but this started off with, um, if you want to read this in detail, you can freeze um, the video and read it in your own time. Um, but this guy bought um, a set of the Z80s and a set of the 6502 boards, uh, along with some protection modules. 
and uh, basically going through he's not really providing any specific fault reports but he's saying that uh, four out of the ten protection modules didn't work and had multiple shorted lines and all this sort of thing which now I'll go over in this video why I find that a bit of a, a dubious report now I would say that the uh, Fluke 9010A does have a habit of reporting uh, all manner of faults that are not really related to uh, the actual fault that is detected and if you're familiar with the 9010A and how it uh, behaves then you'll be familiar with that um, but unfortunately people don't understand that when they're trying to build these pods and they'll blame uh, everything apart from um, themselves for their uh, lack of assembly skills or uh, maybe they've got a, a module with a fault that hasn't been detected but um, so I'll go over the testing for these and what's actually in these and then uh, hopefully my um, me being dubious about some of the reports of uh, what's being said about these may make more sense. So uh, in response to this, um, and he bought these quite a long time ago, I said that, well, I can't really just send um, uh, replacements blindly. Well, uh, somebody did um, report one of these being faulty a year or so ago. And uh, I think what had happened, and you do sometimes get this, is if there's any dirt on a surface mount component when you reflow it then what it can do instead of being sucked down into the uh, solder as it reflows it can float on top can make contact and then ultimately it's not properly adhered and bonded to the bores the solders it's making contact but it's not um, kind of uh, integrated into the solder and it can get knocked off um, when i make these and test them one of the tests is to brush them so that uh, tries to stiff brush and it tries to pull off any loose components but obviously I can not go so far doing that. Uh, they are inspected and then tested and I'll show you the testing or how I go about testing them shortly. Um, but one guy sent me a photograph where one of the um, diode uh, chips was missing so I sent him a replacement and um, that now seems to have um, been uh, inflated into many people are having problems with uh, parts missing off these. Now as far as I'm aware it's only ever happened once so this is just a case of um, uh, gossip being circulated on forums and then each person inflates it, kind of a Chinese whispers thing. Um, but if you are one of the people that uh, has one of these modules that uh, has ICs or parts missing then please let me know because uh, I'm not aware of uh, more than one of uh, one instance of that happening. Now in response to that I said I'm not going to blindly send him um, four replacements. First, I don't believe they're faulty. Um, but uh, if he wants to return them to me, I can certainly refund him. And now, in response to that, I, I got this. And again, I'll let um, you read this yourselves. So you can freeze the video if you want to read it. Um, but basically what he's saying is that, uh, well, as I'm not prepared to blindly send him replacements, he's going to start circulating bad information about um, my products. Now, uh, that's unacceptable. Um, I'm doing this to try and help people and if you're the sort of person that just wants to create trouble, cause problems uh, because you're too lazy or unwilling to do the legwork yourselves uh, and or just don't want to um, look into how these work then I can't do much about that, I'm doing this to try and help. Um, but as far as the protection modules are concerned, we'll have a quick look at what's in those because I think there's a bit of misunderstanding as to exactly what they are. So. Uh, I've got a Dave CAD drawing here of uh, one channel of the um, modules and there's eight of these per module and all it is it's um, an in-out module so you have a single pin going to the UUT and then you have an output from the uh, Fluke pod that goes through a 100 ohm resistor directly out and the protection is just currently missing through the resistor. Now coming in you've got a 3k resistor and this goes to the latches on the pod and again this is just to kind of isolate um, the pod and also reduce the loading on the UUT. It doesn't really do anything. You could short this out and you could short this out it would still work. The two diodes again they don't really do very much. You could take this diode out and uh, the guy who reported that one was missing if he plugged the module in it almost certainly would have worked. Um, what they're for is there to limit the voltage at this point and um, although the voltages might seem a bit strange when you think about it it makes sense. This is a 5 volt system. So um, by 
it's not important down here of course because you've got a 3k resistor so the kind of protection built into the latches uh, through a 3k 3k resistor is fine um, but up here because it's trying to drive um, directly through a 100 ohm resistor if there is an issue at the UUT uh, or indeed at this end then you don't want to drive more than 5 volts here and you don't want to have more than 5 volts driven here so if this point tries to go above 5 volts then you get about a 0.7 volt drop in the diode and it's clamped then to this 4.3 volt rail so it clamps this to no more than 5 volts doesn't do anything below that uh, and the same um, if you try and go below 0 volts if you try and go below 0 volts at this point then again it's clamped by this voltage so the diodes are not really active they don't do much and most of the time you could take them all out and the uh, protection module would still work you could short the, the um, resistor the protection module would still work so constantly pointing a finger at these uh, modules saying that uh, well it must be faulty is um, I think it's showing a misunderstanding as to what these actually do now there is a secondary function to these in that they are also used to put the uh, UUT into halt mode but again that won't stop the uh, 9010A from running it'll still work uh, and all, it, all this is for is um, and it's only for certain pods as well um, it allows the Fluke 9010A to drive this point to 5 volts if it wants to and then it can kind of uh, hold the UUT in a certain mode and it does that for example on address lines if it wants to hold a certain address uh, and that's again a secondary function but it again does not stop the um, pod from working so this uh, idea that uh, oh well it, you know it must be the, the protection modules are at fault so this that and the other firstly very easy to test if you think you've got a fault with them then test them if they're faulty i'll replace them but just saying oh they don't work dude uh, you need to replace these i'm going to start spreading misinformation is uh, totally unhelpful and it's going directly against what my channel is all about which is trying to help people um, support these old machines and devices uh, and not just spread childish gossip if you're just going to spread childish gossip then you're not interested in supporting the products uh, now with regard to testing as i said it's very easy to uh, test these with a meter if you want to or a scope um, obviously it would be impractical for me to do that uh, to test them in all different modes so what i use is my abi chipmaster now if you're not familiar with these you'll know that you can get um it's, it's a basic a digital chip tester and it comes with a fairly extensive library um, of uh, test programs so you can test all manner of different things up to and including z80 processors that sort of thing but obviously it wouldn't be able to test this because it doesn't know how to test it however i have the chiplink um, software for this and uh, i will be posting a separate video on that so i realized it might make quite an interesting video if you're not familiar with this or this process um, and in particular a good candidate would be showing the test program and uh, the way that this test is set up so basically the uh, there is uh, what you do is you, you define what each pin is on each device you want to test you set the thresholds now the thresholds i chose for the test for these modules were ttl level because uh, in general you're going to have ttl at both ends uh, of the in out and at both ends of the out in so um, that's the level that I've set and um, in theory that should give it the best possible chance of being properly tested and then what it does is it applies uh, it assumes that um, this is going to be at um, a high voltage or a low voltage so it applies appropriate voltages here you can define the voltage that is applied and of course I select appropriate voltages and um, there the are different modes this runs in of course so it starts off in the default mode with these voltages it then applies an output to here a TTL level output and then it measures the voltage here to make sure it's within spec and you specify the range of voltages that are acceptable and again in this case it was the TTL range of voltages and also here so it's it applies an output here and then it measures the voltage here and the voltage here it doesn't really put a load on this this is meant to be an input so in theory you should get a ttl level voltage here and a ttl voltage level here it then does the reverse it applies um, a ttl 
voltage and it toggles between low and high. It then does the same thing at this end, monitoring again these two points, and then it does the same thing here and monitors these two points. And in theory, that's going to pick up any uh, missing devices or shorts. It then does the um, same thing from this point to this point, but then it toggles these values to make sure that it can successfully um, pass current through the diodes. And then it does the reverse to make sure that the diodes are not short and don't pass current the wrong way. Uh, it does that all in uh, a, a, about three or four seconds. So uh, I'll post another video on this. It's, it does a very detailed test at TTL level. And I do this for every single module. So it's just, I pop it into the reader, into the tester. Test it. It takes, let's say, four or five seconds to do the test. And then I do the next one. And I do that, I, I tend to make these in batches of 10. So I do that for all 10. And um, that's the, the level of testing they get. So it's very extensive. The boards for these are also bare board tested by the board manufacturer. I don't do that, but it's done by the bare board manufacturer before I uh, make these. I don't manually assemble these other than for the connectors, the boards themselves. I've, I've actually posted a video showing how I make these. They're assembled on a pick and place machine and reflow oven. So the chances of the parts being uh, wrong or, or put in place wrong is extremely remote. Um, the pick and place machine I use has two cameras. So it checks the component orientation before it fits them. And um, then I inspect them clean them, they're flux washed, and uh, then they're tested in the uh, ABI units. So um, the chances of them being faulty is very low. It is possible. As I say, the main thing you're likely to see um, is if a component has floated and wasn't knocked off with a brush, then uh, it is possible it could get knocked off um, subsequently. It's fairly unlikely, um, but it is possible. Um, I've only ever seen the one, as I say, um, but um, you, you never know. Uh, the, the problem is at the moment we seem to have sort of gossip circulating around some forums and it's impossible to try and figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, and when you get people um, like our friend here uh, circulating emails like this, then it's impossible to support um, products like this. Um, I don't make a profit, so there's no value in me um, going any, any further than this. And uh, really because of this, what I've decided to do is uh, discontinue um, providing these modules. Now this person has said that he obtained some of these from somewhere else, um, as he says in here. So dude, I found some somewhere else. So um, I've asked him for a link as to where you can get them. And as soon as he tells me um, where they are, uh, where they can be purchased from, then I will of course um, let you know and um, provide a link to them. Um, but I'm not going to provide these anymore. They're uh, fairly aggravating to make and very time consuming and I don't make money doing it. So I've decided to uh, to pass the baton on to somebody else and hopefully our friend here can uh, let everyone know um, uh, exactly where to get them from. Okay, so as I say, hopefully our friend will provide a link um, as to where you can get these from. I'll be shortly removing these from my website and um, uh, Sorry about that for anyone that um, has been buying them uh, and uh, they haven't had any problems. Um, but at some point I, I need to uh, move on and um, this is not something I'm going to uh, tolerate. 